We did it. We did it. We are going to Wembley today as well, as this is a huge episode. We've got plenty of games going on, but the most important one, other than deadline day as well, is Brighton versus Grimsby in the Carabao Cup final. Hey guys and welcome back to episode number 9 of season number 7 of the FIFA 21 Grimsby Town to Glory. And yes, we are straight in today because I'm not even going to show you the league table. We have a rush on our hands. Smash the like and subscribe if you've not done already because we have Aston Villa first. Going to show you the seasonal calendar though and it isn't put in the big game I've spoke about. Yes, we've got deadline day and Aston Villa as well, should mention that. We are going to simulate this one. They're in a bit of a rut this season. We're going to play Manchester City and I think it's around here where the Brighton game gets shoved in. Maybe that's Saturday before... Actually, no, it can't be the Saturday, because we've got a game on the Sunday. Leeds United will be a simulated one, so maybe two played and two simmed. Of course, one being Man City and another being a final. And, of course, transfers still to go. So, yes, absolutely huge episode, this one. As I'm going to go two episodes back now to answer the questions. Made a mistake in answering the uh, last video's suggestions in the last video, so I've got to go... And bend time, a bit like the Matrix. So, we're going back to Callum Jacobs saying, I would like you to sign a new striker because you've got no one apart from Semenyo on the wing. I think I might have solved that, but not with another striker, but with another winger because I've got one in mind. Phone went off a little bit there as Jayback Gaming says, sign Sta uh, sell Stacey and sign Hakimi. I've already seen this comment earlier. Oh, well, I did see it earlier, but I kind of forgot about it a little bit and I had my mind fixated on Dean Henderson. So, I don't know if I've got the money for Hakimi. Plus... We've used him in the Arsenal save before, so I don't know if I want to reuse players. And Carts of Green F says right here, we'll definitely keep it realistic, but I agree by uh, some better players. Also, check the free agents. And the reason I'm reading this comment out is because we're going to it right now. Yes, with 9 million in the bank left. That is not much considering the wages we have to give out next in this uh, new season. I've got three players on the list. First one. It's a winger, both wings, and striker called Angel Banega. It comes from Real Betis, so ex-teammates with, of course, Raul Garcia, a really good player here for us. I think he'll be suitable for us, although I'm going to leave him to last. Amu is a striker only, and I don't know much about him, so I'm going to have to keep scouting him. But the first one I want to bring in, he has been around us for ages. Always looked at this guy, Felix Nemecha. We tried to sign him when we were like 66 rated in League One, so now he's 78. He's learned from his time at City. He's in his prime or going into it at 26. I think he is a really good backup player. So we are going to try and approach to sign him. Really good start to the episode if we can get him through the door. I think we can use him in seasons to come and should reach around an 80 rated. What's important though? I'll accept it, but I don't think I'm really going to grant it. As three years on the contract, yes, that is acceptable. What about the release clause? None of it. As just tell me what wage you want. Don't leave it up to me. Tell me. Oh, and it's me who's got to do it. He's on 61 at the moment. I'm going to offer 40. It's a lot for a player of his quality, I think. And he accepts it. Felix Nemec is through the door. As a game has, in fact, been slotted in there on the 27th. So it is after the Leeds game. And also I sold um, Harrison Lacey as well, just off screen for half a million. Doesn't really affect things. As for this next game, I've gone with, I'd say, a strong team, although a couple are very tired still, with Dino in the goal. It's Stacey, Matty Pollock, the captain in this game, as Ayers just stepping back in and Kelly in the defence, with Semenyo still on that wing, Chalaber, Pope and Todd Cantwell, with Nemecha straight in for his debut in Cam and Florian Balogun to be supported by him because Dowell's very shy. The only players I would have wanted to be tied is like Cantwell and Semenyo because I've got plenty of wingers, but they're not. They're fully up to it. It's the central midfield slot, the CDM, which of course Tommy Doyle's out and Josh De Silva, so he's been rough on us. As Aston Villa struggling this season, they've built their way back up to 14th though and we are in 11th. So this is going to be a tight game at Blundell Park, a simulated one as well, as can we get a win just before the transfer window is over? We don't. It's a defeat to Villa. It's Traore and Fabio Silva with the goals to actually sink us. And that ain't very good. So, not going to plan in that game. God, we've got to change something quick. As Chevalier is moaning as well. What can we do with this team to move forward? We've got to, of course, get rid of a goalkeeper. But we were on for Europe at one point. 
and the simulator games, and I think the cup as well, the cups, should I say, because we're still in the FA Cup, have really screwed us over as well. The focus has been on them. And as for money, we've spent 72 million and only got 1 million out. So we've spent more money, but then conceded more goals and lost more games. It's very annoying. A Chevalier even says he's happy with Grimsby. That is a bit weird since you're not playing. I am going to keep on simming these games as well, see if anything comes through. I'm still contemplating Bayania, the uh, left winger from Spain, but then again, he'd have to be trained down to a midfielder. And of course, we do have Dan Smith and Brooks to still come back, so it's going to be tight fitting him in. I'll have another look though, as the last hour. Actually, something's going to come in. Is this going to be a big bid or something? It looks like it might be. Kieran Dahl from Inter Milan. Oh, that is good. That is a very good offer for Kieran Dow, but can we accept that? He's his best player and has been for years, but Inter Milan, can you reject them? I'm going to actually ask for more money. If they give me 45 million, I'll accept it. But of course, I've got to try and be realistic by selling players, but realistic as well by getting my money's worth. And 32 million for this guy is not good enough. It's not. Even after his first championship season, I want to accept 32. So... They're not even going to budge. 3% release clause. He's got a firm contract as well. So it's not like they're trying to get him on a cheap because of his contract. 45 million Conte. And no, he's going to storm out. Good riddance. We also might not have been able to spend any money ourselves. It looks like it only might be Chevalier. Not Chevalier. Um, who's the other one? What's his name? Nemecha. Nemecha is the only one through the door, I think, in this month. As we might have another offer in. But yes. We spent 70 million on one player, so we have got money spent. It's just if we've done it right, as we are still in 11th place in the league, we are now five points off even eighth, which we were in a couple of places ago. So that's quite bad as Barry Leach gets a loan offer. Actually, it's not a loan offer. It's a transfer for 8.2 million plus a crappy goalkeeper. That's getting rejected. Too late as well with this. We're going to have to look at our academy later, see if we've got any more gems coming through, as I'm not looking forward to the next game as well. Manchester City when we're in a rut. However, at least there's one positive going into this game. We can use our full strength squad with one with the uh, bandage picture with Dino in goal again. Stacey, who we failed to sell, is just dropped straight back out for Frances, who has finished his suspension. Rodon, Aya and Kelly are alongside him as well. Of course, Rodon, we're going to keep his eye on him, but I prefer him over uh, Matty Pollock, sorry to say that, with Cantwell on the right. Pope, Chalibur and Semenyo on the left going the other way around with Dowell, Backingham and Balogun still up front. It's a really strong team. In fact, the only player in our team which isn't 80 rated is Chalibur. And I think when we have De Silva back, no, he's dropped to 79, but he should go up there soon enough. And Brooks, he's dropped to 82 with his massive injury and he could go back into the team and cause Semenyo up front. So there's a lot more changes. I honestly feel like uh, injuries this season have screwed us over and that's no excuse as we face top of the league. It's definitely not the ideal scenario and not the game I would have selected to try and get us on a little bit of form before, of course, a cup final. But then again, we have bottom of the league leads to simulate before or after this, should I say, before the cup final game as Dal leading his men out there. Dino, Man United player in real life against City right here. As how do the first place team line up? They've got Edison still in goal. Atal, Perez, Laporte and Porro at the back with Pavelosa, Guimaraes and Valverde in the midfield. Anthony, Jesus and Sterling. That is a lot, lot stronger than the City teams we have faced of late. Definitely a lot stronger than the City team that we face in the Cup, which has got us to this final. Haha, <laughs> you're not winning the Carabao Cup against City, so screw that. Yeah, you might be top of the league, but are you not getting the energy drink trophy? I don't think so, as Kelly's on a run right here, gives it into Semenyo. Got a ball around the corner right there. It looks like a decent one, Balagun on the stretch. It does seem a rather slow-paced game, this one, even though they've got fast players like Sterling and Anthony up front. But I guess that is Guardiola's philosophy, like try and kind of walk into the net, but not exactly, of course, as Aya gets the ball from that little throw-in, and he's going to try and walk out a little bit. Give it to the winger in Semenyo. Now we've got Dowell in the middle. I'm liking this slow pace, you know. He's actually getting us forward as Semenyo. Now put the afterburners on a little bit. I see Todd Cantwell at the other post, but Balogun waiting in the middle as Edison punches. Little flurry for ourselves right there as, oh, Gabriel Jesus turns out brilliantly. Gives it on to Bruno Guimaraes to bring the ball forward as well. Into Anthony, round the corner as Rodon steps it out. And Chalaba, oh, just doesn't get that ball. Pavelosa as well. Gives it into Jesus. And Man City coming at us a lot more. Valverde, it's Jesus again through to Valverde. Dino in a race, Dino saves. 
but he doesn't catch it. Dino, come on. You put your arms around that one and you don't let it hit your chest as it's bounced straight off to Jesus to make it one. Poor goalkeeping, I think, from our 87 rated keeper. He's not having a good return back at Grimsby Town. But then again, is it all his fault? Probably not. The defenders have got to do better. He did save the shot, stopped him getting chipped and, of course, went down and caught it. Well, not caught it, of course, but blocked it, but... Still not the best. So now we've got to try and rebuild it. We started off a bit strong as well. I mean, not really any shots of venom, but like balls like that one where we're almost through. So we're not all bad, I don't think, as Valverde cuts away there, though. Valverde is so good in this game, I don't understand, although he's gone down there. Chalaba is the only player really, really, really getting stuck in right here. As He gives it to Semenyo as well. Over to Balagun. Give that back in the middle. Oh, good block. And Kelly here gives it into Kieran Dahl. Can we try and conjure up something here with this move? Semenyo on the wing gives it back into Balagun. Now on to Brandon Pope. And we are getting plenty of players forward. Just not making them good runs like Cantwell. Isn't going forward, but he's got a chance to cross in the middle just to no one. Perez, come on, target him, boys. Kelly as well gives the ball around the corner into Dowell. Dowell scrapes it away into Semenyo, and now we can try and rebuild again. Balogun, we've got a good run off the ball in Brandon Pope. We're going to go this way into Kieran Dowell. Give it across to Pope now. Is he on side? He is! And we are level before half time, and it's our boy wonder, Brandon Pope, who every single season just picks out like one or two months to just start scoring. It's a bizarre thing that the Ginger Perlo just does, as look at that across net. It's a sweaty, but Edison kind of did get there, but did not stop. 1-1 against the Citizens. And what a time to get it. Just before half time, I will take a draw happily. With the form we're on against the league leaders, I will take a 1-1 draw. But I've just got a feeling with City's attack and our counter, that it won't finish this. It never does. At the moment, it's either a squeezed win or a big, big defeat. There's no in-between, really, as that's a dodgy pass as well from Ante Pavlosa. I think City are here for the taking. We've just got to try and take our shots. As Joel Rodon gives that ball away to Valverde, though, and, oh, Frances, great turn away from Raheem Sterling as we can try and get down this line. He's going to make the move, yes, Dowell. Does make it. Of course, he's blocked his transfer from Inter, but he gets his head down. Not like Ivan Conde Al Salado. He keeps on pushing and even wins a corner for us there. Off Laporte. A chance to cross and maybe take a 2-1 lead to Balogun, but doesn't find his head. We are actually the better team and hopefully it's the, the story of the tortoise and the hare in terms of the Europa League push. We take it slowly, but we do win the race as Balogun with a chance. Tries to shoot. Good block of the ankles. It's been a very good first 15 minutes of this second half. Dante Pavelosa, though. Don't let City get away with this. Jesus has been snapped, siphoned, in fact, to the ground as Bruno Guimaraes. Oh, got a tackle in there. Brilliant from whoever it was who just stopped it a little bit. Todd Cantwell, but Jesus is still down. He actually gets a bounce back from Guimaraes. That's a very weird thing to happen in this game as Guimaraes keeps on going. He keeps on going. Gives it into Federico Valverde. Don't let City steal something. It's a great turn from Federico in the middle to Jesus. And it's 2-1 to City. And it's Jesus, of course it is. He gets off the ground to score. How lucky is that one? He literally were injured a minute ago. But I guess you can say it's a bit of karma for injuring him. Look, it's a great turn from Valverde. Takes our man out of the equation. Aya goes across and Henderson. It was 1-1. One -on -one. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I just knew it wouldn't end up 1-1, one -one, though. You can just read them in our games. We never actually just get a draw against a big team like... Against Tottenham we did, but that's really the only time. Can we try and forge it, though? It's Pope. We've definitely been in this game. Balogun around the corner to Nemecha. An ex-City player almost got the pass off. Gabriel Jesus has actually stopped on after his injuries. That's a very weird one. Frances as well. Dodgy header, but we've gone attacking now. I've just changed it as Nemecha spread that out to the wing. Semenya with a bit of a run on here. At Atal, who's just come off the bench, I think he's cutting inside as well. Nemecha with a great run against his old team. Nemecha to chip it over Edison. He's hit the post. Balogun couldn't get there. Big chance late on to snatch an equaliser. As the move's still on, it's Semenyo in the middle. Find Balogun. Oh no, find Nemecha again, who flicks it up on the volley and it's drilled in on the ground. What a chance to nick something, eh? Which we haven't taken. As Valverde is going to run it forward as well. I think that's the game as Chalaba. Just the work rate from him. Yes, we're going to lose this game, but has been magnificent. Maybe we don't because of him, actually. He's made a great tackle there and Florian Balogun 
give it. This is the last attack, surely. He's got to be on side of Semenyo, and I think he is. Drilling his way at the defence. Can he find a pass to Balagun? He does. On to Todd Cantwell. Good touch. Cantwell with a shot. Sends the keeper. And Atal to give it back to Edison. Oh, this is a nervy game. As he's blown the whistle as well. We wanted that, we really did, but we haven't got kind of what we deserved in the end. So, it's a 2-1 defeat to City on the road, and it's a mixed bag. We can take it with the heads held high, really good game, but then again, didn't get the result. Yeah, not the not the result I think we deserved after that performance. We do have a player back from injury. Is this Tommy Doyle or B, one of the big guns? B, De Silva, who started off phenomenally. Oh, the other one. No, it's Tommy Doyle. I mean, I sound disappointed that a player's back. He's still a player. And I am going to go to full strength for this Leeds game. I've got faith. Five or six days rest is enough. So, yeah, I'm going to try and get the victory because we also need a win. These are bottom of the league. I probably could rotate a little bit, but I'm taking zero chances with Hendo in goal or Dino, should I say. Frances, Rodon, Aya and Kelly at the back with Semenyo. Chalaba now going up rating. Pope the same and Cantwell with Dowell and Balogun's going up rating. Good to see. That team now in simulated games, I think at least, should be getting results. I don't know how it didn't happen against Villa. Then again, Villa were decent last time out, last year, should I say, or season. So I think... We should have a good game, although there's an offer in here for Semenyo. 33 million from Munch and Gladbach. That's come at a very weird time, and I am rejecting it. There's no way I'm letting him go when we're in a surge with a cup game next as well. That'd be stupid. That'd be stupid. Outside of the window as well. No, it's not happening. Leeds United, though, hopefully is happening for us, as this is the big game before the final. Get a win to put us on a bit of a... Upward spiral, at least. Can we? We do. Chalaba with an early goal and Todd Cantwell to kill it off as Leeds United are swept aside under the rug. And yes, we've done the double over the West Yorkshire team. Boom. As this is why you guys are all here. Maybe some of you came for the City game. Maybe you come for deadline day a bit, because I can understand that. But this is the main reason I'm excited today and hopefully you guys should be. Brighton versus Grimsby. There is, well, I think after that win a one point between us in the league and of course they have beaten us this season we thrashed them the first time we played them it's all over the place against the Seagulls so this should make up for a very entertaining game at Wembley no big teams no Liverpool no Man United no Chelsea no Man City to beat just two mid-table Premier League clubs scrapping it for a big domestic cup I can't wait to see how this pays out on the 27th as well my lucky number, mind games going on already, as I think it has to be the same team as well, doesn't it? These are the boys which hopefully bring Grimsby Town their first big trophy, really. I'm not counting playoff wins as huge trophies in the championship. Yes, it's a big one, but this is the biggest with Dino in goal, Frances, Rodon, Ayer and Kelly at the back with Semenyo on the wing, Chalaba, Pope and Todd Cantwell on the right-hand side with Dowling Cam. And Florian Balogun leading the line. Boys, let's bring the Carabao Cup to Blundell Park. And here it is. The stage is set. It's Wembley. It's going to be blue, white and black. Or black and white, whichever you want to say. As it is, of course, the final. I've gone on about it too much. As let's see the teams. And there you can see the trophy. That's a better view of it. Look at that. Gleaming in the sun. Hopefully gleaming in a trophy cabinet. In McMenemy's in Blundell Park, which is like the lounge a little bit. If you didn't know that already, that's a fun little fact from me. As I want to see this Brighton Hove Albion lineup, please show me. As it is as follows the big team Aito in goal, very old goalkeeper him, with Tyreek Lamptey, Tuan Zebe, Norovic, Crespo, Pieto, and Firpo. Looks like a five at the back. And is Lopez, Curtis Jones, and Wesley in Cam supporting Boateng and Imbolo. So it looks like they've gone very defensive, but then again, very attacking with. Wesley in camp, and he definitely is the striker, Wesley, the one from Aston Villa, because I saw his player face. So, yeah, I think we've got to target this midfield. Jones is good, and Unai Lopez is decent as well, but the two of them look like they've got a big job on their hands, being very attacking and defensive-minded, as Brandon Pope can see the reflection of the Wembley arch. I don't like that in games, but got to live with it as Brighton. Starting off quite good, keeping the ball away from us. As Christopher Ayer as well makes a tackle here in the defence. It looks like they were coming forward a little bit. Just under 10 minutes in, and Kelly, let's try and charge forward and put his first attack on, shall we? I tried to force the ball to Balogun a bit earlier on, but of course, I can't really force it against five at the back. It's going to be a very 
Very possession-based build-up, I think, to try and get past them. As please be on side, he is. We've got Balagun running in front in support. We've got Kelly, though, again, and we're moving forward very smartly here. Chalaber in the middle, gives it to Balagun. Dowell on the overlap. We've got a man running through the middle in Brandon Pope, and he's off the crossbar. Big chance early on there, and it's away from Brighton. Great play, great build-up from the Mariners, but... So close, but yet so far from taking the lead. Can't get any close from Brandon, and see what I mean? He just comes to life every little bit of the season, near or just after transfer deadline day in January. It's his thing. It's his thing. There's an injury as well. Who's this? It is Briel Mbolo. Down for Brighton. Hopefully everything's okay. Going to be a drop ball as well. Unai Lopez to hoof it forward to Dino. And we've started a lot of attacks through Dino as well. Again, like against Sheffield United, I think. So let's try it again. As we're going to give that to Kelly and Semenyo. I love the build-up that these have on this left-hand side. And Chalaba, as Semenyo's got a bit of a run on here. Balagun in the middle. This is when we can use Kalajic when I'm going to whip it in. And Balagun did get there. But he had a narrow angle. I let him off. Big chance gone there, though, as it's Wesley. I don't know who's come on. It is Zakiri. Just don't let him score the winner if they win, boys, as Brighton have a new striker. Curtis Jones being pushed back as well by Christopher Ayer. It seems like a very open game as well. You can tell we are similar teams in terms of position and, of course, playing styles. As Semenyo has the ball luckily fall to him, and we could get an attack on here. Semenyo with a lot of uh, space to run on this wing. Almost burped there in the middle. Can't find anyone, but Semenyo gets it back into Balagun. Into Pope this time, and Pope is a missing when you give him another chance. Brandon Pope makes it 1-0. Half an hour in at Wembley in the Carabao Cup final. Great hit as well from the youngster against the old man in goal. Runs onto it and knows how to strike a ball into that bottom corner. We lead in a cup final. God, I love Brandon Pope so much. What a player he has been ever since he stepped foot in this club through the academy. It's his boyhood club. As can we try and make it two? Two will be good. I know at Wembley everything doesn't go smoothly though because of course Preston beat us on penalties when we were 3-0 up. But still, I would not let another goal go amiss right here. It's Chalaber through the middle onto Pope again for another. And that one's saved. But yeah, like I was saying, Nothing certain, so we do, I feel like, need another goal here. Semenyo on the ankle. Unai Lopez, very lucky that didn't strike an arm as Zakiri to try and get it away as well. Into Curtis Jones. Great tackle from Rodon, though. Onto Balagun. Back heeled into Kieran Dowell. And he's no Brandon Poe. He's honestly dominated the game. Him. And again, I've got to say, Trevor Chalaber deserves a lot of credit. Lowest rated player, but seems like the highest, to be fair, in this episode. Especially as it's almost half-time as well here against Brighton. Don't let them get back in it before half-time. We've been the better team since around 20 minutes in, I'd say, as Zakiri has the ball. Spins on it very well. Christopher Ayer diving in all over the place. But referee, it should be game over. Are you going to blow this whistle? Are you going to let them have the attack? It's Manny Boateng looking around the corner. Cleared. Oh, my days! And I think that was Alejandro Frances who hit his own crossbar. That is insane. We are very lucky not to go in 1-1 right there. I can't believe I've just done that. Oh, well. I'll say Dino had it covered, but I don't think he did. It was definitely us because no shot on target. As, yeah, dominant first half, but again... We are just let off the hook. So I've got to try better in the second half. A little bit more than we just did. So Frances... Running forward. Can he find a man to the side of me? He does. Todd Cantwell. I always like playing to the side closest to the screen for some reason. So now it's the right-hand side other than the left as Pope. He's been great in this game, of course, so I don't doubt he can't do it again. But he's been tackled there, though. And Wesley with a ball through there to Zakiri. They could have a chance on here, Brighton. And he's level. Brighton Hove Albion get a level of straight after half time. Out of the blue, of course. But it's a ball through. And that half time team talk for Graham Potter has gone really good for them. We've got a challenge on his hands. And he's celebrating in front of the town fans. I hate that. I honestly hate that. He's beaten Joe Rodon for pace, of course, recovering from an injury. And hammered it past Dean Henderson. It looks like Brighton aren't going to give up without a fight, so it's going to be a 1-1 in the final. Not the result I hoped for, but the result we've got at the moment, so I just don't understand. The first shot on target for Brighton, or the first shot of the whole game, ends up resulting in a goal, and it was a just an easy throw on goal. It's a lapse in concentration, no defensive error, just concentration-wise, as hopefully we can exploit them there. Toe Cantwell with the ball into the box, looking for Dowell. Can't reach him. And Brighton have just sprung to life in the second half especially. 
as of course, like I said, it's the man who come off the bench to score for the Seagulls. Of course it is. Just the man we don't want to see. As that's a great interception as well from Kelly. Gives it on to Kieran Dahl running forward. Unai Lopez solid. And a free kick here for Brighton Hove Albion. It's Curtis Jones who's received the ball. He's going to strike at goal. Is he 31 yards out? Gets a roll onto him and does. Alejandro Frances takes a blast into the thigh as well. Hopefully that isn't mitre ball or he may be dead as Tyree Lampte, or Lampte gives the ball into Wesley. Now on to Curtis Jones. Can't let Brighton take advantage in the second half. They've been phenomenal as... Ooh! That was close. Annie Boateng almost exposing Dean Henderson right there as the ball we can't get out of his own half. It's Pope with a slight tackle in failed, but Campwell with a great interception to kind of calm us down a little bit, but still the pass doesn't come off. And it's Pope, the goal scorer, who doesn't get it off this time. As Manny Boateng to run forward. Has the ball in the middle. Gives it to Zakiri. We've just got to drop back. Don't let Brighton get a sniff at goal. As that's a great interception. And we've really had to hold our own in this second half. I mean, Brighton Hove Albion have grown tremendously well into this um, game. They've been the better team. Although that's a lapsing concentration from the defender. And it's through to Florian Balogun. One on one with the keeper. Chips in. Off his line. And we take a lead with 10 minutes to go. It's a mistake from the Seagull centre back. The main one in the middle. As Florian Balogun has got a rating increase. He's got a starting place in the squad right now. And he has taken it. Through on goal. And chips Aitor, the old man who should be on his line. Straight into the back of the net. We lead two to Grimsby, one to Brighton. And five minutes to go. Five minutes of the final left. We've got a lot of players on yellow. As you can tell, I've been snapping quite a few in this game. As Unai Lopez as well with it. Jumps over the tackle to Zakiri. And no! No! Joe Rodon's connected. At least he's not getting sent off. But with three minutes to go, it's a penalty to Brighton. Is it a foul? It is. It's definitely a foul. It's definitely a foul. As I'm going to put Jack Stacey on as well. I don't think it's going to make any difference. As Brighton could make it 2-2. What a final in the Carabao Cup it's been. But can Dino make himself a hero? He can with a save. And he's got it. He's actually saved it again. I thought that was going to trickle in after the first save. Dean Henderson. He hasn't had a great start to his Grimsby Town career since he has joined back after his loan spell. But that could be a big save. Brighton still not giving up. Kelly with a tackle into Zakiri. Great tackle again, Stacey. Whack it as ref blows the whistle. Dino, you legend. Balagun, you legend. As it's happened, Grimsby Town have won the first trophy. The Carabao Cup comes to town. What a win that is. There he is, one of the goal scorers, the boy wonder. Of course, he's been here since his career began. Said that quite a few times today as Brandon Pope isn't going to lift it, though. It's going to be Kieran Dowell, isn't it? As there we are in the huddle. Celebrate your life out, boys. Yes, the league form's dropped, but we have a trophy. What a feeling. What a feeling to win it. And I bloody love Dean Henderson more than I ever did at the moment. What a save to keep us in it as there's a trophy. Looks great in black and white. The EFL Cup, oh, it'd be better if it had the Carabao Cup branding, but beggars can't be choosing. It's got it on the sleeve as here we go. Dino, you could lift the trophy with that save alone, but it's going to be Kieran Dahl to put it in the air and lift it high. Grimsby Town are the victors in the Carabao Cup 2026 to 27 season. Celebrate into the night, boys, and all those fans who have travelled to Wembley in the numbers. I want you celebrating till the morning. And yes, everyone on that bus, up dancing and everything as we have done it. That's the first objective. Ticked off. Probably broke my mic with all the screaming I've done and probably woke everyone up because it's a little bit later at night when I'm recording this. But still, I, um, I can't be happier. 2-1 against Brighton at Wembley. It's a trophy in the bag. And it's a big trophy. It's one of the top tier ones. We'll get to the press conference. And we'll round it out. Honestly, what a great feeling as it's on to another cup game next. Oh, my days. I'm going to, of course, leave it till next episode as it's Aston Villa away at Villa Park in the cup. We've got four games coming up tomorrow, so we might actually be able to play that one. Then we've got the five. Then we've got three more. And, of course, a lot of them are hard teams, but we've still got the FA Cup to go for. So you never know. It could be 
Yes, Europa League failed, although we're still, of course, going to push for it. We're not out of that. Definitely not out of that. But it could be a double domestic season. You never know. With the team we've got and the strength, I think that's possible. Rodon is suspended for the next cup game, but I honestly don't care. I don't care because he's helped us to win that. I mean, he didn't do us a favour in the end, but we did win it. And he was part of that team, of course. As this is the end of a very, very successful episode. Thank you guys for watching. Episode 7 of Season 9. Switch them around and you'll get it in the right way around. Of the Grimsby Town to Glory. Like, comment, share and subscribe with the notification bell on as well. As hopefully you will stay tuned for the next one. And the remainder of this series as we are not stopping there. I smell more trophies. It's either that or a Puma Pants. <laughs> so I will see you all in the next one. Take care. In a bit. And peace.